Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this afternoon's third and final um, ISP business model webinar. Um, we've been running these over the past three weeks. Um, last couple have looked at uh, customer proposition. Uh, last week was networks and this week we're looking at cyber security and the other uh, business opportunities around that. Um, before I go into a bit more detail on the introduction, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, the event is being recorded and will be uploaded onto Whisper's website after the event. If you have any issues with that, let us know. Um, we'll be taking questions at the end of each uh, or both presentations. Um, so please do save any questions until then. Although equally feel free to put them in the chat um, as we go through. Uh, and please go on mute um, when you're not speaking just to save any background noise that I'm sure we're all very familiar with. Um, so the purpose or the, the theme of today's event is, is of course cybersecurity. Uh, and as we all know, it's only increasing in importance to, to ISPs and operators, both from a regulatory uh, sort of governmental perspective, but also from a commercial perspective as well. Um, yesterday, ISPA was briefed by the DCMS on the upcoming telecom security bill. Uh, this is going to put in place significant new requirements on telecoms operators to protect their networks from, uh, from, from, from cyber threats uh, with significant powers for Ofcom to take action to uh, oversee this and enforce it, uh, in addition to the additional requirements around high-risk vendors. Uh, such as certain companies that were um, hear about quite a lot in the news. Um, so from a political and regulatory point of view, there's once again a whole big push uh, for further strengthening the powers that we're seeing. Um, but in addition to regulation and, and rising customer expectations, um, we've long thought there's an opportunity with cybersecurity for, for members to uh, perhaps be able to, to monetize it further, to um, improve networks, um, with it, and that's really what today's session is all about. It's hearing from a couple of, uh, of our partners, um, sort of experts in the field, about the opportunity uh, within cybersecurity for members to, um, yeah, turn turn a threat into an opportunity, um, and to hear some thoughts on how that can be done in, in two separate ways. Um, firstly, we have Sonic Wall um, speaking, and then that's followed by Wellbone, who are a um, slightly different um, offering. Um, so, without any further ado, I will pass over to our first speaker mario Pacciarelli. hope i yeah uh, right thank you <laughs> and director of strategic accounts ema at sonic wall uh, he's going to take you through uh, so please introduce you further to, to sonic wall so over to you um yeah. mario yeah thanks a lot audio and presentation is okay it is yeah perfect yeah fantastic so um my name is mario Pucciarelli. i'm italian and currently based on uh, in Dubai, in Middle East, where I follow the strategic partners for Sonic Wall in the region of, uh, of Middle East and Africa. And uh, we had some interesting projects uh, regarding uh, the cybersecurity in the telco um, environment. And uh, I mean, I, I will essentially talk about some business case and some way to propose cyber, say how to pitch the um, the cybersecurity offer to a telco to go and sell to the end customers. Uh, before that, just a uh, few figures about Sonic Wall. Uh, we've been in cybersecurity industry since almost 30 years. Uh, at a certain stage, we passed through Dell. So maybe somebody can still remember that uh, uh, we are part of Dell. We are not part of Dell anymore since 2016. Company is fully independent and uh, owned by uh, private investors and with a very aggressive roadmap. We have uh, what we call the threat network. So we've got uh, millions of sensors on the field and uh, we constantly uh, analyze what's happening in the network. We collect malware sample and we use this malware sample to update our appliances and our software to, to, to protect our end customers. Now, we elaborated a concept that we call the cybersecurity gap. Uh, what's happening today is that, uh, as we all know, um, there is work from home, uh, we've got multiple devices, we've got the uh, bring your own device. And uh, so this is creating uh, uh, lots of complexity, uh, lots of exposure points. But from the other side, the investments, the skills are not <sighs> growing 
at the same pace. So there is today a gap that it's increasing between the risk, the exposure and the cost and the actual uh, budget allocated and the resources allocated. And we, I mean, we also need to remember that the resources allocated are supposed to run the business and not to, to, to protect the business. So especially with SMB, uh, we think that there is a, um, a great potential in the market because normally uh, when we talk about cyber security and when we call about hacker and threats and attacks, uh, this is what you know every everybody thinks about in the world. We think about an hacker in a hooded jacket somewhere, just with this uh, you know movie style uh, attitude and penetrating. And sometimes the attitude is that I've got a small company. Mm, why somebody should be interested in my data? Why somebody should hack my account? And and. At the first, we need, just need to let them understand that the hacker is, is not some, a, an attack is not coming through this way, but most likely an attack is coming this way. So probably they will receive uh, uh, an email that looks good and from a reputable source and probably clicking on that email, uh, it's going to create a risk and it's going to create an exposure. And still today, 70, 80% of the attacks are performed through emails. And this is what's normally happening after uh, the email. So this is uh, the typical screenshot of uh, WannaCry request for ransom. So this is only one of the case, it's ransomware. And then we've got crypto mining and all other kind of attacks that can be performed by a, a malicious actor. Malicious actors that today are not uh, just uh, uh, kids, scripty kids, but today there are organized uh, uh, structure uh, that are able to deliver malware as a service. So everybody can go on the dark web and just shop for malware or for uh, any kind of, of malicious service. And there is a business model attached to that. Okay. So they need to understand this. And the first reaction is, that, yes, but I mean, let's go and shop for some, uh, for some solution. And this is just what's out there in terms of vendors. It's impossible for uh, an SMB uh, to allocate the time and the skills and to select the suitable supplier for their cybersecurity needs, okay? They simply cannot go and shop outside. They don't have the resources and they don't have the skills. But at this point, uh, there is something interesting. They had all experience with cybersecurity incident and all the SMB, they trust, uh, always trust their telecom provider or their ISP, okay? So the telecom provider or the ISP has been with them since the founding. Uh, when we set up an office together with the office, we go for connectivity. And today it's still the, 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 the supplier that it's trusted by the SMB. So it's uh, quite, there, there is a sweet spot there for the telco operator or the ISP to go and propose cybersecurity services on the top of uh, connectivity, okay? And uh, these data are coming from a request, from, from, from a research from uh, Analysis Manson. You see the link at the bottom and it's uh, available on the web. So I invite you to go there and to download this document. It's very interesting about the need of security in the SMB and how telco and ISP can win that part of the business, okay? Now, um, when I think about uh, the SMB today, um, I like to put it in the middle uh, and the SMB is the gray block in the middle. There are data, there are payment, uh, uh, payment system, payment gateway, POS, uh, archives, and normally uh, it's connected both sides. 
from one side it's connected to the to the broadband okay and on the other side it's connected to the wi-fi today for an smb especially in the hospitality segment uh, or in uh, healthcare i would say in, in most of the segment it's normal to offer uh, wi-fi to guests okay so wi-fi to guests is another exposure okay and uh, somebody can perform malicious act or misuse or abuse the wi-fi resources uh, so when i pitch to the to the telco and, and the smb uh, regarding this security i always like to tell them that they are exposed uh, land side and air side okay and uh, both are important to be protected okay and the telco can perfectly manage both sides of the security again another concept when we go and discuss about cyber security with the smb they do not really understand the the wording the environment and uh, the terms so we don't talk about firewall or we we talk about business continuity we give you uh, something that allows you to keep working and to protect your business from threats and disruption we keep your team productive because uh, i mean we can uh, we can throttle the traffic we can ban some uh, bandwidth consuming sites and so we we are sure that uh, your investment in uh, in communication equipment it's uh, it's used properly for your productivity purposes liability compliance and we already discussed in the introduction how important is compliance especially in in europe here in middle east it's more a matter of liability but i would say that i mean putting in place um, some uh, strong uh, cyber security tools and i mean essentially firewall and managed access point you can uh, prevent access uh, to certain sites not very productive or sometimes forbidden and ensure that the there is no 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 infringement of compliance and then accountability uh company need to track what the employees are, are doing and uh, a firewall is constantly monitoring all the connection and on the other side um, a professional uh, um, cloud managed wi-fi is uh, able to track and to identify any single user accessing to the wi-fi with different authentication uh, mechanisms now a uh, few case studies uh, at isalat it's uh, really close to my heart because it's uh, it's something that i've done in middle east and uh, uh, there is an offer of at isalat for the smb segment that it's called business in a box and uh, all the business in the box connections are coming with uh, tz350 included in the offer and uh, we are passing as we speak this week the 15000 units delivered so we have today in uae 15000 firewall tz350 all managed by tsalat and all managed by the same platform and uh, also in terms of volume has been quite challenging because the installation rate is uh, is in the rate range of 30 installations per day so of course we've got uh, challenges in logistics in fulfillment in activation and we will see later how uh, we were able to to sort it out another case study is batelco batelco is the main uh, uh, operator in bahrain uh, governmental operator and uh, they have today an offer standard on sonic wall using tz350 as a standard firewall and uh, an access point called 231c and those two devices are in uh, full managed mode by batelco so batelco is actually uh, managing the firewall and the access point of their smb customers and this has been just launched last month and as we speak today it's under commercial rollout uh, other two interesting cases uh, one is in italy where team 
is uh, running our TG series in fully managed mode. And it's very interesting in Italy because we have uh, a licensing model called FlexPend. So uh, FlexPend uh, um, is a way to build the licenses that it's very flexible. Essentially, you don't buy the license and you attach the license to a device, to a serial number, but you buy credits, okay? And uh, um, so you buy a bulk of credits and then you associate the credits to the various serial number to the various devices and it's much easier for the for the delivery team to take care of all the licensing overhead and it's also uh, more efficient from the financial point of view because they can revoke a license assign the license to to another machine so we have a dedicated uh, uh, licensing model especially for the telco and uh, the last case is uh, BT in Italy, where uh, our firewall of the TZ series, who is the, base, the basic series, and NSA, who is the mid-range series, are offered in fully managed mode and integrated in the BT uh, next secure service. Now, uh, on the top of our experience, we were a bit just reviewing which are the common uh, requirement of uh, the telco and ISP players that are very different from any uh, standard uh, IT or, or system integrator company. So at first, there is the need of uh, security because telco or ISP is, uh, is selling security service and is uh, uh, committed sometimes with the authorities or the regulatory to provide security services. So, I mean, the, the security itself is, is a foundation. And then there is the need of flexible uh, uh, pricing and billing model just to avoid the peak capex and just to follow what is the billing cycle of the telco or ISP that it's normally on uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, easy pricing, uh, dedicated customer support and a management tool like cloud platform and also a company easy to easy to work with. And uh, in uh, what is the Sonic Wall approach? We have today um, a part of a program that it's called MSSP for security service provider where we offer a monthly and billing subscription on uh, all the software uh, products, tire discounts, and uh, easy pricing model. Uh, access to L3 engineer, management and automation tool, and we will see it a uh, few slides after this. And then we have local sales support and a strong uh, uh, field organization both in UK, in Middle East, and in Southern Europe. Now, uh, yes, but which are the products? So normally, the, the, this is the baseline. So at the bottom, we see on the, on the left side, the firewall. On the right side, the access point. And then there is a, a new range of products that are the switches. Uh, we provide the switches uh, because they are totally integrated in the Sonicool platform, there is auto discovery. So today, if you need to provide uh, security, connectivity, and Wi-Fi in a certain site, you can just simply deploy the three boxes, the firewall, the access point, and the switch, connect the switch as PoE. And from the management platform, there is auto discovery, and you can, with few clicks, really activate the three appliances and have Wi-Fi and connect, secure connectivity up and running in a matter of minutes. Beyond that, uh, that it's what we call sometimes office in a box, there is what we call SD branch, software defined branch, that it's a solution that it's more oriented to medium enterprise where you have also um, a data center, a disaster recovery site so we can also cover that part of, uh, of customer base offering also um, appliances for 
Bot Data Center and Headquarter, and also orchestrate all the branches with SD1. Now, uh, when we discuss about deliveries in uh, in um, in volumes, the deployment is key. It's part of the value of the product. If we think uh, about the labor cost in uh, in European countries, it's very high. So the capability to deploy literally uh, a firewall as which an access point in, in in a matter of minutes is key to keep uh, the the project profitable and uh, all our appliance come with what it's called zero touch so it's simply uh, a way to self-provision the appliance so you register on the site you connect the machine to any internet connection you power up and the machine is automatically attached to um, to the license manager, download the license, and it's up and running with the configuration that has been defined at the registration phase, okay? Um, just to give you some figures, uh, the average in the Etisalat project that I know uh, very well because I was the one in, in charge of that, uh, the average delivery time uh, and installation time of firewall is in the range of 30 minutes. And uh, still today, we deliver on the range of uh, 30 firewall per day. So it's quite labor intensive, all the, all the setup operations by the field engineers. Besides that, at the activation time, we have what we call a single pane of glass management product, and it's called the Network Security Manager, who is a cloud platform that it's used to manage uh, all the appliance of SonicWall on the field. So it means that you as a telco or ISP, you are the customer and you see your end customer as tenants, okay? So you can simply uh, do back activation, back termination, uh, um, duplicate configuration and create all kinds of reporting that you need to do for marketing reason or for billing. And then there is this concept of templates uh, that comes with the previous one. So uh, when you do, at the time of the installation, you don't have to just uh, create the security setting, for example, for a firewall or just, or create the, the Wi-Fi setting for, um, for an access point. You can simply define some predefined templates, let's say uh, small office, medium office, uh, with different level of security. And whenever you do the pre-activation of, uh, of an appliance, you attach the template to the, you attach the template to the appliance. In this way, the deployment is extremely efficient and, uh, and fast. Focusing a bit on the access point portfolio, uh, we've got the 200 series, that it's the small one, and the 400 series, that it's the long range one. And normally in this kind of SMB project, uh, we work with the 200 series. Uh, another key point, uh, working with the telco and the ISP, we realized that, uh, I mean, it's, it's not like selling to a standard uh, system integrator uh, or a partner, where uh, you go there, you drop the box, they take care of the box, they install it. Eventually, if there is some problem, they call the, the customer service or the support. But uh, it's, uh, it's much more than that. It's uh, enabling uh, a partner to serve the final customer based on SonicWall technology, okay? And uh, we, thanks to the experience that we had in, in, in the last projects, we now have kind of methodology where we can support at any stage the pre-sales team defining the right product, the right security template, training the team. Uh, we can train the sales team how to go and propose the, the solution to the end customer, including literature, 
telesales script proposal promotion and collaborating with lead generation plan and uh, other marketing actions up to a uh, sales incentive plan and also we support on the on the delivery side okay so we can work side to side with the field team it can be an uh, field engineer in-house or an external outsourced company and we work side to side with them to make the field deployment uh, efficient uh, as vendor we have uh, uh, partner programs and uh, i would say that in this case mm, we have the basic uh, uh, SQL first partner program that is the standard program and on the top of this there is the mssp partner program who is uh, reserved for telco and isp with some uh, very specific conditions to um, for telco and isp the main one is uh, monthly billing or uh, other flexible pricing model uh, i don't go in details on this uh, i'm available for discussion on the partner program after after this uh, this presentation and then we can support in operation. I mean, uh, again, it's working with a tech on ISP is very different uh, than working with a standard system integrator because there is a flow of goods. And from one side, there is the, the distributor. And on the other side, there is the fulfillment partner that can be a third party or the delivery team. And we can support both sides. On, uh, on the distribution side, uh, we have very strong uh, agreement with local distributor and we can take care of all the logistics spare parts accessories and uh, local compliance uh, especially when it comes for uh, to uh, wi-fi products and on the other side if you have a fulfillment partner we consider the fulfillment partner uh, as uh, i mean as, as as part of the customer so we do training onboarding we define together the operational procedure for the deployment and they've got full access to sonic wall as um, as customers so they can uh, they can work on uh, on the my sonic wall portal and they have access to to the support team as uh, as you have so that's all from my side uh, i'm happy to to answer to your question if any and uh, you see there my email and contacts and i'm available for further discussion i'm based in uh, in um, in uae in dubai uh, the team is uh, more europe centric and i mean we cover all europe so thank you hand over to you andrew thanks mario really interesting to get a run through of uh, sonic wall and its capabilities um I have a couple of questions just to kick things off, if that's okay. Um, so you mentioned SMBs is a big focus of Sonic Wall. What are the particular sort of threats and, and needs uh, facing um, SMBs as opposed to, to corporates and others? And how do you um, how do you respond to that? Well, uh, it, it's an entapped segment. I mean, for for from the telco side, it's uh, it's uh, it's an untapped segment because normally cybersecurity is for uh, banking, for enterprise, for governments, and normally the 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 SMBs is uh, is, uh, is is a kind of green field or brown field. So there is potential there. Uh, on the other side, there is uh, there is uh, awareness of the risk at the SMB. Again, they don't have the skills, uh, they don't have the team, uh, they don't have the knowledge and sometimes they don't have the budget but they trust the isp on the telco and uh, in, there is a sweet spot there okay um there are researchers where uh, the willing they are willing to spend so they are aware of the risk they want to spend uh they know perfectly everything happening about ransomware and uh, and uh, other kind of attacks and um, so there is definitely a potential on on that part of the business and uh, on the other side i mean you cannot dedicate the same resources that you dedicate to a to a government or enterprise customer so the importance to have a very simple kit that it's almost plug and play is key to make it uh, uh, profitable for for the tech operator so it's it's just 
matter of balance between security and simplicity. And uh, I mean, we've got some success cases and because we can provide enterprise level of security with uh, uh, SMB cost. Yeah, that makes sense, thank you. And you mentioned that you're based um, in the UAE and I know your, your role is an EMA role. Um, what um, differences do you see in different parts of, um, what parts of Europe, but maybe even globally, to mm -hmm. approach cybersecurity? I don't know if there's comparisons to be made between, for example, the, how UK operators operate versus um, other European operators, for example. Yeah. Um, well, I think in Europe is more advanced especially because of compliance and especially in terms of GDPR, okay? So I think that GDPR is, uh, is a big driver in, uh, in, uh, in Europe for the adoption of this kind of solution. And uh, it's just a matter of compliance. Uh, in UAE and in Middle East, there are some uh, other kind of, I would say driver. Here it's more controlling what's happening at, uh, uh, in the company. So here it's, and, uh, data residency, okay, and geofencing. So um, there are different level of maturity. And I would say that in, in the European market, the GDPR is the key driver. The adoption of GDPR is the key driver to promote and support the adoption of a, a, a structured cybersecurity approach for the SMB segment. Thank you. Are there any questions from others on the on the call? If not, I have a quick final one, which is just about, clearly I can't let this go without talking about COVID and what we're seeing. I mean, what do you think the legacy of, of COVID and the impact will be for cyber security? Uh, the work from home. And uh, it's, um, it's, exploding the number of uh, exposure points, okay? So uh, the company normally they are used to um, protect their perimeter. So there is an inside and an and outside, okay? So uh, you are in the corporate office, you are behind some firewall, you've got some rules and I mean, and today you work from home. So when you work from home, normally you are uh, connected to a broadband and probably you are sharing the network with your uh, teenage kid downloading from some uh, questionable sites. <laughs> so it's not the, 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 the a very clean network configuration, I would say. So this is the, this is the impact of COVID and, and work from home. We need to guarantee that whomever, working from home does not relax the security rules and the cyber security rules. And again, it's, it's creating exposure of, uh, of, uh, of um, an explosion of exposure points. And for this, we've got a solution for that, that it's uh, from the VPN to the endpoint protection to um, our access point, creating uh, the virtual, what we call the virtual corporate Wi-Fi at home. Okay. So I think that's the, I mean, the, the bottom line is that there is more exposure and uh, you cannot reduce you cannot relax the security rules and we've got the tools to secure also the work from home environment. Yes, it's accelerated lots of existing uh, trends and will only continue to do so, I think. But um, well, thank you, Mario. That's really, um, really interesting, really useful. Um, and we'll follow up on some of those points with, the, uh, with members too. So thank you. Thank you. Moving on, um, if I could ask um, Robert and um, Petra, I believe that's how you pronounce it, I could be wrong, uh, from Whalebone to, um, yeah, to, to present on, on DNS security, which is a, a hot topic for us, but has been for, for some time. Uh, it'd be interesting to, to hear what your offering is uh, for, for members. And, and yeah, again, we'll have some questions at the end. So over to you. Okay, thank you, Andrew. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk as the first one, and I'm going to tell the basics about Wellbone and about uh, use cases our, our customers are using us in a, uh, many ways. And I'm uh, Peter, I'm Petra in Czech, and I'm a business development uh, manager responsible for ISP segment. And Robert, who is going to speak after me, is uh, the CTO. Uh, and so in the beginning, well, if you are asking what is Whalebone, uh, it is a DNS resolver, but it is a service that raises a DNS resolution to the next level. 
It is on-premise resolver for ISPs, but is facilitating network management and protection and opening up additional revenue streams. I'm going to talk about all of the parts I have mentioned a while ago. Uh, but first of all, let's have a look on malware and what is really causing it to uh, you as ISPs or telecoms. Uh, the main issue is that it can cause troubles uh, to your customers, but also to you as a network. Uh, and uh, what is it? It's typically, for example, IP blacklisting and connectivity wasting. Uh, it has impact on the network availability, reliability and performance. And it has also uh, a lot to do with uh, your whole network security. For example, the active network components uh, may get uh, infected by malware too. Uh, so what we do is so we've uh, helped with all of uh, these three parts and we help also with the compliance with uh, RFCs, with national regulations. For example, we can uh, block gambling uh, or porn and so on. And uh, we can help you with customer complaints that are caused by malware. I'm going to tell later how. And uh, as a result, we help you to cut the cost down uh, to help you for, with your infrastructure. And for example, uh, to reduce uh, such a uh, situation like now there are increasing, uh, increasing dose attacks uh, on ISPs. I'm not sure if you are experiencing it too, but uh, it's uh, very, very often uh, reported uh, from our customers. And why we are dealing with malware on the DNS level? The reason is that uh, DNS uh, is used by over 90% of malware, according to Cisco data, and the number of uh, the percentage is increasing. But according to the uh, ISPA uh, survey last year, 88% uh, of ISPs are for under attacks. But if you compare it with the number of uh, your users who believe you should do more, 85% uh, told it actually, uh, it's a uh, kind of like a formula that you need to take into consideration. And uh, one number is not here. I'm not uh, how many of, uh, I don't know how many of you uh, are protecting your DNS resolvers uh, and the DNS traffic uh, against malware. But uh, from the business perspective, 68% uh, uh, of uh, business uh, don't monitor DNS traffic at all. What is Wellbone doing is so we protect uh, all devices that are connected to the network on the network level. So there is no need to install anything uh, uh, additional to the uh, devices. And the Wellbone uh, stands on three pillars. Uh, one is we want to give you the top resolver that is uh, tailored, made for ISP needs. The second is uh, we understand security as a first uh, of all. Uh, we don't sell data and so on. And the third is uh, we want to be customer centered. So we uh, develop our product based on the customer uh, needs and feedback. Uh, what does it mean to be resolver? Uh, the main issue is latency. Uh, you need to have a good latency to have a fast internet. Uh, we use as a core node resolver with this transparent code that uh, allows us to be compliant with all RFCs. Uh, and uh, really give us a very good latency comparing even standard resolvers without the network security. Now I'm going to move uh, to specific use cases, how you can use Whalebone. And uh, it is based on the feedback uh, that we are receiving from customers. So first of all, I mentioned uh, CTO of AirwayNet as a company having around 15,000 subscribers. And uh, they told us that uh, as soon as they've uh, deployed Whalebone, they have experienced uh, that uh, the amount of uh, incoming DOS attacks to their addresses of uh, NATs uh, decreased. And uh, they understand us as a tool that is protecting the network against the impacts of uh, your irresponsible customer's behavior. So uh, Whalebone is a protection not only against malware, but also about, against the uh, irresponsible behavior of your users. Second example is this from small, small uh, network having 2000 subscribers. And what you can see here on the chart is uh, the amount of domains that has, uh, has been blocked in one hour, that it is really half of a million. And this number is uh, made 
only by two ubiquity devices that had uh, not uh, updated fire, uh, firmware. Uh, and they caused a lot of troubles in the network and they have uh, realized it uh, straight after the uh, trial de deployment of their uh, network. Third example is the from uh, the network uh, where they have experiencing uh, troubles, uh, having uh, a lot of uh, IP blacklisting and so on. And they were not able to find the reason. They were still changing the IPs for customers, uh, but the reason uh, was not clear. We helped them. We found out that they have uh, they have uh, their uh, open VPN that is uh, used uh, by the attacker, uh, by uh, the infected client, and uh, it is uh, publicly accessible. We tried to, uh, tried to help them to sanitize the device, and uh, it helped them uh, to reduce uh, this. And one example from the UK is. Uh, this screen and a screenshot from uh, our mobile phones. Uh, you can see here uh, maybe some of the messages you have even uh, received. That the scam uh, messages uh, that are sent by, uh, by uh, the attacker uh, via short uh, text messages, uh, inviting you to enter such a domain that are actually malicious. And uh, in the case the user is in your network, uh, trying to open it, uh, the domain is blocked and the user is, uh, is uh, alerted, hey, there is an issue, uh, you are entering a malicious site. Uh, what is very important from, for you for, from the network uh, protection perspective is that uh, the network is uh, very, very well, for, how, to, how to say it, uh, you, uh, the attacker may uh, use even your name and to, uh, to destroy your reputation. Uh, you can see here for three screenshots. Uh, one is from uh, Orange, uh, where the attacker is uh, telling the user by the name of the operator, hey, uh, you have a birthday, we have a birthday, and here's a celebration, uh, enter our site and uh, attend our, our, our competition. And uh, it can really, uh, it can really uh, damage your reputation. And it's also what we are able of, uh, to protect uh, you as a uh, network provider. Uh, and the very important part of uh, network protection and management is that the uh, majority of threats are not limited to browsers, phones or computers, but really to all kinds of devices connected to the, uh, to the network. Uh, so for example, if you consider uh, spam or for malicious, malicious conminers, for example, uh, from the perspective of uh, where it is placed. Usually the user doesn't know about it at all, but the only thing he is uh, experiencing is, my internet is slow, uh, I'm not able to access this site, uh, or I'm not even able to access uh, the internet at all. And it can be caused by the, uh, by the uh, malware that is uh, behind in the processes. And that is uh, what we see as a majority of the traffic and that we block, and Robert uh, later will show you specific examples. Uh, as a result, uh, we received uh, feedback from our customers that the amount of the abuse alerts, emails, uh, saying, hey, you have a trouble in your network, you are accessing some uh, malicious sites, uh, your customers are doing bad things, uh, was reduced uh, to one third from the previous amount. And even the bandwidth was freed up uh, and uh, the amount that the customer told was 1.6%. Uh, That's not really a lot for a small network, but a really important number for a big network. Uh, the second area is uh, that good resolution means customer satisfaction and less work for you. Uh, next slide is about why it is important uh, to uh, think about uh, DNS as an important part of the network. Typically, small ISPs use uh, cloud public-based uh, resolvers, such as Cloudflare or uh, Google DNS, uh, to resolve in their networks. I'm not saying the whalebone is the best uh, way to go. Uh, you can uh, even try and uh, make uh, your own opinion. But uh, the best way is to go on-premise with your resolver because it's improving reliability, latency, data privacy, and uh, it gives you even the local IP visibility if there is any analytical 
uh, an article level of the uh, DNS traffic. Uh, what can good DNS resolver with the network analytics uh, may bring to you is, for example, the faster uh, loading time of the IPTV. Uh, we have experienced uh, some of the networks with uh, serious issues uh, loading uh, the IPTV platforms. And uh, from the one specific platform and one specific uh, network, they told us that before whalebone it was 15 seconds and after it decreased to 4 seconds, which is a very important uh, change. But why it is important to have a look at the DNS traffic and uh, understand what's going there is but sometimes, if you are also uh, providing some special uh, SLA uh, services to B2B customers, you need to help them to find the incidents, find the tr uh, troubles and uh, tr with troubleshooting. And we had a customer who called, contacted us and told, we are not uh, able to find uh, what's the reason for some uh, network incidents. Uh, we have uh, looked at the data, so at our visible uh, whale bone, we find out that it was uh, on and the incident was going uh, live only in particular time uh, during night and especially on specific dates. Uh, we told them, we uh, told them also to find the uh, infected Windows XP devices and they uh, finally found out that there were uh, stuff in a storage area playing games on the old, uh, old very old uh, Windows XP machine. Uh, the network admin has no idea about it and uh, due whalebone, they have found out what's the, what's the, what's the uh, reason for the problems. And whalebone is also helping you to deal with customers' issues. Imagine a customer is uh, calling you, telling, hey, uh, my internet is slow. You are checking the, uh, the wall uh, line. Everything from technical perspective seems okay. And you uh, can tell him, hey, you have probably some issue at your home. But with Whalebone, you can very easily have a look what's going on from the network, uh, if there is any kind of uh, malware problem, and tell them, mm, uh, I can see if uh, the network is uh, okay from the technical perspective, but you have malicious, uh, malicious traffic here. Uh, it would be great to uh, check all your devices, and I can even sell you, and we are at the business model, I can even sell you license, for example, for ESET antivirus, uh, so that it can help you. Uh, the second thing is that we are able to help you to act before the customers are, are complaining. Uh, imagine uh, there is a DNSSEC validation issue. It means domain is not working, is not uh, properly translated via a uh, browser, and the user understands, hey, there is a problem with my connection. I am going to call ISP. And you can, again, check it. You can tell him, hey, there is a DNSSEC validation issue. Uh, we, you need to wait because it's not our fault, but the fault of the, of the domain hosting. Uh, but you can prevent it. You can uh, check it uh, based on our alerts. And if there is any uh, issue with uh, DNSSEC that is massive, for example, we experienced in uh, some countries nationwide uh, DNSSEC uh, failures of banks, of uh, energetic companies and so on. So you can uh, help them to uh, find out this uh, issue and uh, you, can, uh, you can be faster than your customers. And as a result, you can reduce churn. Uh, you, can, you can help your customer to be more satisfied. Uh, third area is uh, strictly marketing and sales. Uh, how can Whalebone help you? Uh, first of all, is uh, you can use network protection as a marketing differentiation, differentiation. You can tell my, our network is protected. Uh, you are protected, all your devices are protected. Our customers are usually doing that and uh, they are helping to uh, be better than their competitors. But you can also use Wellbone as a uh, real revenue stream. Uh, you can use it for bundling. You can uh, prepare special premium uh, connectivity package that is uh, containing secured internet. You can, send, uh, you can sell content filtering with us. You can even build a white label product uh, based on the whalebone. Or you can uh, sell whalebone as MSSP partner to your B2B customers and uh, to get a very nice, uh, very ni nice commission out of it. And uh, as I mentioned before, you can use it also as a tool for cross-selling. 
to uh, give uh, your customers uh, information there is an issue in your network and I can sell you uh, some additional uh, stuff like uh, firewall, like uh, uh, end protection and, uh, and uh, device protection and so on. Okay, that was from the uh, business marketing perspective and the uh, impacts of Wellborn and I'm going to move uh, towards uh, the technical part. Uh, I wanted to show you what's going to happen if it is blocked in the network, in the browser. Uh, you know it, for example, from uh, Google Chrome. Uh, there is issue you are trying to approach a malicious site. Wellbone behaves in the same way and also gives you the chance to uh, bypass the blocking page. Yeah, that's what, that is what uh, the end user see. But you can uh, turn it off. What is very important from the technical perspective is our hybrid architecture. It means that everything what is important and what is crucial for your network, it means uh, the NSA resolution, security function, uh, it's operating on premise in your network and uh, it gives you complete un uh, dependency on us. You are not dependent on us at all. And in the case there is a meteor going uh, to hit our data centers, everything works for you. There is just like small issue, it's not updated. Uh, but it's not an uh, issue actually uh, for you. Uh, what you need to deploy Wellbone is a uh, very small for hardware uh, requirements for machine. Uh, for standard networks, it's just uh, two CPU cores, four gigs of RAM and four gigs of uh, hard drive size. You install it uh, to standard uh, Linux machine and you direct uh, your network traffic to it and that's all. Uh, I want to uh, stress out one particular thing. We really uh, want to work with security and uh, we are very, very sensitive to network neutrality. So we made uh, legal uh, analysis before and find out uh, if it is possible uh, to block on the network level and it's actually it is. Uh, we are very, very uh, aware of uh, data protection and uh, of security uh, management. But what is, what is also important is that our philosophy is to give you the best, I would say, state-of-the-art uh, security standards. That's the reason why we are, for example, supporting uh, DNS over HTTPS already, and we can deploy it at your networks in a very easy way. Uh, Railbone is not a small company anymore. Uh, even the large telecoms are using us, uh, and uh, in my segment of uh, internet service providers, with the wall network uh, protection, we have over half of a million of uh, end uh, licenses already. In uh, third continents, uh, 14 countries, and uh, we have been nominated for ISPA awards or for, for Broadband uh, World Forum awards this year. And what I wanted to mention is that uh, we are, and uh, based on the customer, uh, customer uh, testing, we are uh, the best uh, in the detection rate. What is uh, very important for you is a price. And uh, I'm not sure who is sitting on the uh, second side of the screen, if you are from smaller uh, ISP or from the larger networks, uh, but there are three uh, free, uh, product variants. One is for you, for uh, what is uh, helping your network. The rest is more about uh, building a product. If you will be interested, uh, we can later have a one-to-one -one, uh, call and I can explain uh, later. The thing is that Wellbone uh, in the ISP segment is uh, deployed for the wall network and the wall network uh, is protected and uh, based upon it, you can build the product. Uh, what is also for good to mention is that I wanted to give you some special for promotion. If you decide to, to for try Wellbone, uh, I will expect the trial for uh, one more month, if necessary, even longer. And I can give you a discount uh, if uh, you uh, will, uh, will decide for Wellbone till the end of the year. And uh, that's uh, my last uh, slide. And I would like to ask Robert to share his screen. I will, yeah, and uh, please uh, show Wellbone from the inside. Okay, hello, hello everyone. Uh, so I will, you know, I will use a few minutes to, to show you the actual, uh, the actual management console. 
and uh, how you can manage, how you can configure and monitor uh, the, your available resolvers and, and the DNS traffic. Um, if you if you if you would like to have a, a deeper, uh, more technical demo, please ask ask Peter. Uh, we'll be happy to do it. Uh, and uh, at the moment, let's have a let's have a brief look into into our console. Uh, the user interface uh, serves you to, to manage all the resolvers in your network. We have customers with single resolver. We have custom, the very, very small ones. Most customers uh, have two resolvers, but we have also customers with like eight or even, even more resolvers in the platform. Uh, each resolver uh, is monitored um, via, this, via this platform, via this user interface, including the things like the, the latency, uh, the health checks, uh, the performance, memory consumption, and disk usage, uh, and all these things uh, can be also uh, monitored and alerted uh, in real time if, if anything goes wrong. So we understand that the DNS traffic is a is a crucial uh, crucial thing for you. So you can integrate our alerting system to your email, Slack, API, uh, to your help desk uh, to uh, to notify the responsible persons right away. Uh, there are uh, specific alerts from, uh, for communication failure with the, with the central management, uh, with the resolution service failure. As we have seen some, uh, some misconfiguration in, in the past uh, on, on the perimeter, perimeter level mostly. And uh, for example, also the hardware resources issues uh, could be alerted via, uh, via our platform. There are much, many, many more alerts also security-wise, uh, but uh, I've just mentioned the, the operational ones uh, for the moment. Uh, in the configuration, uh, each, each resolver can be assigned multiple uh, configuration profiles. Uh, from the security point of view, we have security policies. Uh, there is a DNS resolution configuration and also the blocking pages, let, let me touch these topics briefly. Uh, in the security policies, you are able to influence how aggressive uh, will the, the resolver be uh, towards the, your clients. I mean, uh, if we should be really cautious in blocking only the verified threats, or if someone actually orders from you uh, a higher level of security, you can move the thresholds around and the lower uh, the threshold for the, for the blocking is, the more uh, potentially malicious traffic you will, you will block. Our default is set to, uh, to the threshold of 80, which basically means that you are, uh, you, are, you are safe and you will have a minimum of false positives. Uh, you are able to define your own whitelist, blacklist, of course. You are able to comply with the regulatory restrictions for a particular country. So we support multiple, multiple countries and we, we are adding more countries uh, as needed. Uh, so we basically take the responsibility uh, on us. And there is, a, there is a, an option to, to also uh, enable content filtering, which is usually uh, enabled only for particular networks, such as, such as schools or, or some governmental institutions. So there is uh, an example of a policy for schools uh, with the, the adult uh, filtering of sexual content and, and gambling. And all the policies, that's, that's, the, that's the cornerstone of, of Valebone, all the policies can be assigned to particular IP ranges or uh, particular customers in your, in your network. Let me just briefly show it. In the policy assignment on the resolver, uh, resolver level, you can just uh, add a new, uh, a new IP range and, and assign it to the, the particular policy such as the schools and uh, behave in a default way to all other customers in your network. So this is, this is one of the options how to, how to boost your revenue with additional, uh, additional services towards your uh, customers. In the configuration, what I would also like to touch briefly uh, is an option to adjust uh, the blocking pages. So the customer, when we block the customer, and Peter has showed it, 
uh, in the presentation, we display a blocking page and you are in a full control uh, of what will be displayed. Uh, so our default, our default uh, blocking page um, looks like this and you are in complete charge on what will be included, what logo, uh, what texts, uh, if it will be, for example, dynamic in terms of if you, want, if you would like to tell the customer uh, what are the uh, the threats detected? And there is an option to proceed anyway. If the if you don't, if the customer doesn't, uh, if the customer thinks that uh, he's safe to go there, he doesn't uh, need to call your help desk. He just want uh, can decide and continue anyway to the to the tar uh, target website. If the languages that we support here you know, from the scratch are not enough you are free to, to add uh, basically any, any other language that you, that you need to and support multiple languages on, on, on the single deployment. And uh, uh, the page actually recognizes from the browser which language it should serve. So uh, it aligns with, the, with your customer base. Uh, I will jump briefly in the, in the analysis part. Uh, so of course, anything that happens on the resolvers uh, you are able to work with. You have a user interface with the dashboards, uh, you have a regular reporting, uh, and you have uh, alerting and API uh, to all of the threats and DNS traffic uh, which flows through the, through the resolvers. It means, uh, okay, let me, let me show you a particular, uh, some particular incident here. I will filter uh, the whole dashboard only for the blocked incidents, what happened in the network, and let me, let me look only for the incidents, uh, the CNC incidents, the command and control incidents, uh, where the client is in, already infected and tries to communicate with uh, some botnet server. Uh, we have an anonymized version uh, for the demo, so there are no IP addresses here, but in your network, of course, you will see the IPv4, IPv6 addresses here. So let me pick the, the most uh, communicative and the most restricted IP address. And as you can see, it basically uh, it tries to connect to the same Russian domain all over and all over and again. Uh, and the domain is connected to, to Xpyro botnet. Uh, you also have some more options to, an to analyze the domain, such as virus total, Google it up, uh, URL scan, and, and some other options, how to verify that the domain is, uh, that, that we are blocking the domain uh, for a valid reasons. If you are unhappy about, about our actions, you still can report the false positives to us and our support will attend to it uh, fastly. Uh, let me also uh, let me also show you uh, a bit more in in a deeper traffic analysis. So anything that happens on the resolvers can be used for by your team uh, for the analysis. So you can troubleshoot the issues of your customers. If anyone is calling. Hey, please. The, some domain is not working for me, or I, I have some. I have an issue with uh, with some particular services. Your support is able to find the, either the domain or the IP address of the client here, filter the whole DNS traffic, and look for the particular queries. Look for the answers and uh, estimate troubleshoot whether everything is okay on the DNS level. Uh, which means if it's okay on the DNS level, the, the issue is most probably somewhere else. So, but uh, for the DNS, you have a single point of view and you can, you can answer uh, anything right away. Uh, all right, uh, last but not least, there are the regular reports. There are the API keys that you, are, uh, that you can uh, just create and use our a public API to access all the information here, uh, which is usually used for, for integration with your internal systems or uh, your scripting, your monitoring, etc., cetera, to, to, even, to give you even more power over what's happening on the, uh, on the DNS resolution. 
Uh, as promised, if, if you would, if you are interested, please get in touch with, with us. We will show you the, the whole thing um, a lot more deeper. And we will also, we will give you the, the option to evaluate the solution on your own. Uh, so, so do it. Uh, it's a matter of, of several minutes actually to install your own resolvers. It's just one copy paste script and you are, you are up and running and you can play with the, uh, with the whole thing uh, on your own. So thanks for the attention and I, uh, I see there are loads of, uh, there are some questions here. Uh, should we should we jump on should we jump on them right uh, right away? Andrew, uh, yeah, thanks, um, Petra and uh, Robert. Yeah, if you want to start start the questions, I mean, I had one too about the impact of um, DNS over HTTPS referenced in the presentation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's obviously a big topic of conversation. I mean, how does it impact um, how you work with with providers? Okay, okay. So uh, I believe there are also some questions regarding the DNS over, over HTTPS. Uh, okay, there is one question in particular like this and the other one, okay, I will answer the other one afterwards. So the DNS over HTTPS, it's, uh, it's quite a topic for basically last year. We are a member of Encrypted DNS Initiative and uh, which actually pushes the, the deployment of DNS over HTTPS and the DNS over TLS uh, as well. And uh, what, what the actual deployment means, uh, um, it means uh, it, it pushes the, the internet service providers to support the DNS over HTTPS. So it doesn't mean that the, you will lose the traffic, you will lose sight of the traffic, uh, if you will provide the DNS over HTTPS resolvers and we support, uh, we support DNS over HTTPS, your clients, your customers will actually be pointed towards your resolvers. For example, Google, what Google does is they ask, they have a central database in the Chrome browser uh, that's telling the, the customer okay, this internet service provider supports DNS over HTTPS, so let's use it. Let's, let's use the, the more secure protocol instead of the obsolete DNS uh, over UDP. But if not, uh, if you don't support it, at the moment, they don't, they don't change the flow. They don't change the flow towards some, some other Google uh, resolvers. They, st they still stick to your uh, resolvers you have in place. The only exception there uh, is Firefox uh, with Mozilla in the US. Um, Mozilla is preferring the Cloudflare servers uh, with the DNS over HTTPS, but for multiple reasons, before it tries to connect uh, to Cloudflare, it actually asks uh, the local resolvers, hey, uh, am, I, am I permitted to do it? Do you, do you allow me to do it or not? And what we do, uh, we uh, answer to, to Firefox, uh, please don't. There are some special features here in the network on our resolvers. Please use Valebone resolvers here. And Firefox is, uh, uh, is compliant with, the, with this and it, it sticks to the local resolvers provided, uh, provided by us. So at the moment, we, we don't see any, any issue with, with DNS over HTTPS. Uh, quite the opposite. We are helping uh, the internet service providers being certified by Google and being included in the Google Chrome database and we are helping them with the DNS over HTTPS deployment. And uh, the other question uh, I can see here is uh, uh, what happens if the if the user is trying to uh, to reach the target website via HTTPS? Uh, of course, uh, it, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, uh, the browser will warn the user, uh, "Hey, the certificate here is not valid for the for the for this particular website. Do you want to continue?" Uh, which is actually okay because we don't we don't want the, the user to reach the page anyway if it's if it's in browser uh, if he agrees then he is actually displayed 
uh, the, the actual blocking page and he can decide whether to continue or not. However, uh, I think the very important number is that most of the incidents are happening in the background without actually the user knowing. Uh, so those are the scripts, those are the malicious, uh, malicious so programs running in the computers, those are some hidden iframes on the websites. So the user is actually not really challenged frequently by the blocking page itself. So that would be uh, to those particular questions. If there is uh, anything else, any other question, I'll, I'll be happy to, to answer it. Well, thank you, Robert. Um, I'll leave it for others to follow up if they uh, want to on those particular questions. But I, I have another question about um, types of customers, types of ISPs you work with. Um, does the particular sizes, large, small, medium, do you have a sweet spot or do you have a product offering for, for a range of providers? Yeah, actually, if, uh, our customers are from the for like uh, networks having 50 subscribers up to uh, the large national white telcos. So we have a special for offer for uh, all kind of, kind of uh, members of ISPA. Uh, the only problem is it's not visible from our website. <laughs> uh, our website is not uh, telling uh, the world story. So if, uh, if there is any, any uh, interest, uh, we can have a talk. I can uh, explain uh, what's available and about uh, and how it can help the particular, uh, particular network. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the, the generous offer. We'll maybe include that in um, our follow-up details with, with members when we send, send a follow-up. Thank you. I'm just conscious of time. Um, are there any other questions at all for Robert or Peter? Otherwise, um, thank you very much for, for joining your time today and thank you for the presentations. They were very interesting. Um, we will follow up uh, with, with people on the call and others with um, slides and the video and so forth. But yeah, it just leaves me to wrap up and say thank you. Um, our next event is the ISPA Awards next month, which will be a, um, a slightly different style of event. Um, so I hope to see you all there. Uh, beyond that, as I mentioned in my introduction, we had um, a... Um, a good call with the government yesterday on the telecom security requirements so we'll be having further conversations with members uh, about what that means from a regulatory point of view so plenty more to come from us on these themes thanks everyone